this is the the layout of the colliery at its most productive. Uh, the colliery worked as a coal mine, uh, as was required two shafts. Number one, pit shaft, which was the most easterly, which is the one in the background. And number two, pit shaft behind the big, tall uh, structure is the uh, shaft which served as the upcast shaft which uh, was connected up to the the colliery fan which for want of a better expression extracted the air that photograph is in the 1920s um, so the colliery was at its highest in terms of employment 20s into the 30s uh, where there was over 1200 men working at the colliery and in terms of its production um, the fixtures that were there from start to finish uh, are obviously the the pit chimney and number one shaft which didn't finish up like that and number two shaft which is the nearest one with the, the big structure the big building in front of it um, the important thing is apart from producing coal the colliery produced its own electricity and if you look carefully um, you've got a, a three-phase supply of electric cables coming out from the powerhouse which is the the fort-like structure with the crenellations around the top where the, the, the big compressors for the colliery and the generators were. It produced electricity that went to the houses that were built in the uh, late or well, early 20s, uh, the name streets, the seven streets, and then there was a supply across to the, the houses that were part of the original colliery village built in the 1860s, 1870s. Um, notice to the right hand side of the photograph it, it's all open countryside um, the other thing to notice is the number of railway sidings that there were in terms of feeding the the trucks who went underneath the headgear now the headgear and the heapstead is the, the buildings that project out from what is the, the winder house there that's where the coal came out of the colliery, was tipped out of the, the tubs and was then sorted and graded. And at that time, they produced a lot of different types of coal at Waitley Hill. They produced good quality coking and gas coal, house coal and general purpose furnace coal. All that was segregated, put into different wagons and was marketed from that point. At the same time, you've got to realise there was a lot of waste produced as a result of mining in terms of rock, stone and, and rubbish coal, whatever you want to call it, and that had to be processed as well. Um, so that came to the surface in exactly the same way as the coal did. Uh, it was put into wagons like that, and at the time that this photograph was working, that waste was shunted away with a loco, a little steam loco, and it went across to the waste heaps that our generation will remember the big waste heaps between Waitley Hill and Thorny, which were over to the northwest of the colliery, and they were shuttled away by uh, loco and in big t 15 ton wagons to be piled up over the years. Um, the open aspect, I'll come back to that one um, in terms of the south view, which is the right hand side of, of the smokestack, the pit chimney. Uh, so all in all that was the layout of the colliery as we knew it at its most productive obviously our generation never saw it like that but I just want to mention one thing but of course it'll crop up a few times number one pit which is the uh, the headgear that you can see in the background which appears to be smaller than the other one is an interesting point its orientation when the colliery was first sunk in 1869 the way the framework was and where the where the, the winding house was built was identical to number two pit they both faced in terms of um, the direction east to west and they both had the airframe the, the sheer legs that supported the, the pull of the, the cage rope uh, both face the same direction. It's interesting to say that the powerhouse, uh, the structure itself, it's not just plain brickwork. They've gone to the bother of, of making it look like a fork. 
a fort, sorry, with the crenellations and the decorative brickwork around the top. And in my day, inside there was the remains of the um, the old generator, but the big uh, steam reserve air compressor and the big electric powered air compressor was still there in use. That's a that's a close up view of the same part, and it's interesting because. On the right hand side you can still see the power supplies leading out behind that you can see what was the fan house and the incline up to it actually is the fan drift that went from the fan house down underneath the ground and uh, broke into number two pit shaft so that created the suction for pulling the air throughout all the tunnels underground through all the faces uh, pulling the air, the air that was carrying um, basically the oxygen that's needed went down number one pit shaft, it circulated underground and all this because of the difference in pressure created by the fan in the fan house and obviously as the air was traveling through it, it became stale, it became um, impregnated with carbon dioxide and other gases and it was sucked through for want of a better expression up number two pit shaft up the fan drift and out through the actual fan to the atmosphere um, but again notice the angle notice the orientation of number one pit because that's important there's a view of the colliery at round about the same time this view is looking from the east it, basically if you're walking from what we now know as thorny crossings into Wheatley Hill. That's the view of the colliery you would have seen in the 1920s. Nearest to you is actually number one pit in its original orientation. Um, the, the pit head gear behind it and again a close-up and the view of the colliery that um, most people will recognize because that's the old pit bend at the top of Shop Street and Institute Street. The interesting thing is to look at number one pit shaft head gear now. It's totally different. It's been completely turned 180 degrees. The stress legs, the airframe, is now on the east side of the shaft. And just poking over the top, you can just see the little cap that decorated the top of the number one pit winder house which was a new winder that was installed basically in 1935 so that photograph that we've just looked at in comparison to the photograph we're looking at now shows that in 1935 there was a lot of work carried out to the surface of the colliery by the then coal owners we're now looking at a video shot basically in the same direction as the last still photograph was and it also shows Apart from the, the new winder house and the new head gear at number two, it showed the new boiler house that was built at the same time. Uh, Wheatley Hill was always a steam colliery. Its motive power was steam. Um, looking down now, we get yet another view of the colliery. Now, this view of the colliery is the colliery of our generation. It happened in the ninth, early 1950s, late 40s, when they actually strengthened number two pit head gear. Now this shows number one pit after it had changed. Again, this is the 1950s. The loco shed that was built to house the, the new diesel loco and the little steam loco. And there we have the photograph as we knew it. That's the format of the colliery as it was. And that's the format of the colliery when it's closed. The important thing to mention is the installation of the new waste management system for getting rid of rubbish. They installed an aerial ropeway and if you look to the left that steel structure that you can see with the ropes coming from it is the angle wheel that actually worked the change of direction from the hopper house which is right at the extreme left and it runs southward over what now you can see the south aspect the really right hand side of the photograph was open countryside and it was like that from when the colliery opened until they ran out of parking space for waste 
to the northwest of the colliery because what they had to do then was find some new area to put colliery waste and that was to the south side of the colliery and to do that the ropeway was installed now the ropeway you can see the ropes projected upwards until we have the view of the south waste heap that was created from the 1930s so in 30 years basically that waste heap the aerial ropeway was constructed they started to tip waste and that photograph there which is taken from where the Durham Road is now the A181 shows the the creation of that waste heap and actually the the, the little tubs that carried the waste the buckets were carried and were tipped automatically and just to the right hand side the little conical structure the little pyramid appearance is a current tipping position where the waste was tipped and over the months and years that heap progressed upwards until they would have to move the tipping point now there's a typical view of the colliery in our generation from the late 50s onwards. The important thing that ages it in terms of 50s and not 60s is the dark structure that's in the background. It's the, the cooling water tower. Uh, the new boiler plant that was installed in the 1930s was an automated boiler um, and they used to recover the steam and condense it so they could use the water again in the boilers after treating it. And that was a, an actual timber built water tower steam went up in pipes as it went up it cooled down condensed to water and they recovered the water to use again in in the boiler plant itself um, in the same photograph just to the left hand side you can see the gable end of the bottom four streets of the colliery roads that were the name street Stanhope street york street stockton street darlington street and we can just see sunland street uh, that view is in fact of the pit yard uh, and the workshop area, the view taken from number two pit heapstead. Um, in the background you've got Hare Hill, um, coming forward you can see to the left hand side behind the smoking chimney the, the northwest pit, pit heaps that were, that were um, built for want of a better expression from the early days. Uh, to the right hand side we have Lynn Terrace and um, coming forward from Lynn Terrace you've got Gowland House and Gowland Terrace but in terms of the pit yard itself you've got the first aid room or is what the miners called it the ambulance room you've got the engineer's office um, working from the right to the left the storeroom and then the biggest workshops of all with the blacksmith's shop and the steam that you can see escaping through the vent is actually from the big steam hammer that was in the uh, blacksmith shop. They did fabrication, they did welding. This area here was the, the first aid room, the ambulance house, and it was manned in, in our generation by um, Chris Hardy. Uh, the colliery engineer's office next to it, and the storeroom for what it was but the, the real goods of it are the workshops. It's an L-shaped terrace and by far the biggest uh, areas taken up by the blacksmith shops. Uh, and to me, the blacksmiths were uh, the creators. They did fabrication, welding, um, obvious forge work. They actually uh, had farriers employed there because Wheatley Hill Colliery, to the dead closed, used pit ponies in large numbers for the way they mined the coal underground and again the farriers worked as part of the blacksmith shop and they did heavy engineering as well hence the heavy hammer that you can see the steam uh, venting from in the corner was the fitting shop um, and obviously mechanical fitting took place there that's where the machine tools were for manufacturing the equipment that would be needed because in a colliery like Waitley Hill, if you needed a nut and bolt and it wasn't a regular sized one, you had to make them yourselves. Um, it was all part of the learning process, that one. Um, next to the fitting shop and 
the the turn in the in the leg of the turrets you had the joinery shop and again there was a lot of timber work done in the colliery um, and there were a lot of joiners employed at the colliery and just off camera extreme left is the electrician shop again um, the electricians had a lot of work to do because there was a lot of electricity used so in, in terms of the colliery support services that's the workshops that structure there that is a relatively new office under the Mines and Quarries Act every colliery was required to keep a record of maintenance of underground machinery of all machinery and as a result um, every colliery had what was referred to as a plan maintenance office and that there just the other side of the compound was Waitley Hill plan maintenance office there was a a full-time clerical officer worked there. Uh, Alan Briley was the one that was in charge of the plan maintenance when uh, records when the colliery was um, working in the 60s. You've got a good view in the foreground there of the angle wheel for the aerial ropeway. You can see the ropes and the hopper where the the buckets that were carrying the waste is off to the right hand side and in there was the the drive the drive engine that worked the 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 winch that pulled the ropes and the hopper control where the operative would um, fill fill the buckets with the waste and push them on the way and off they would go on the journey southwards to be tipped. The aerial rope where was electrically driven. It was um, as I say it was constructed in the 1935 when the, there was a lot of investment went into the colliery and we're going to a video shot here um, now this video shows part of the colliery that the general public never saw it, it is in fact what was often referred to as behind the pit um, it was really really this video is tremendous because it's the last record of Wheatley Hill not as a working colliery because this video um, was shot on the final day of the colliery and um, my mentor and a man that I looked up to a lot as a young apprentice at the colliery Gordon Gordon Carr he was uh, behind this and it's incredible as you look at it apart from the fact that it shows parts of the colliery you would never normally see because it wasn't part of the the general fa facade of the colliery it was interesting and the, the elements that you can see first of all the amount of steam that's leaking if the colliery was working the way it was working there would be no leaking steam the water tank that you can see there and that base foundation was where the the cooling tower used to be we're looking at the back side of number two winder there and if you look carefully there are no cage ropes normally you would see the ropes coming from the winding house up around the pulleys the pulleys to go down the shaft there's no ropes there those ropes had been cut it is really the last hours of the colliery um, the, a, a, a paranormal you're looking at the powerhouse number two winder there's the new fan drift and the, the vent there's the new boiler house that they built in the 1935s with number one winding house behind it. Rather a bleak scene and rather a bleak scene to call with in terms of a really, really cold view of Wheatley Hill Colliery viewed from the east.